On News Center at 5, we brought you the story of a young woman from Shapley whose promising athletic career ended in an injury, prescribed pills, and eventually a fentanyl addiction. News Center's Christina Rex is here with part two of Jordan's journey, finding a solution. Well, Pat and Cindy, once Jordan's mother, Donna, found out about her addiction, she struggled to find, she wanted long-term inpatient rehab for her daughter, but struggled to find that here in Maine or in the U.S. To her surprise, however, the help that Jordan needed would not come from Maine or even our country, but rather from Montreal. I can't even thank them enough for saving her life. It's the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life, is seeing your child almost die. The Dumonts had hit rock bottom. After she left the hospital for fentanyl withdrawal, Jordan went to Milestone in Portland and underwent a three-day Suboxone detox. But her mother wanted her off drugs entirely and in a long-term inpatient rehab. There was no place in Maine for her. Jordan lay on her mother's couch, still in the pain of withdrawal, as Donna frantically called places in Maine, Arizona, and California. Jordan didn't qualify for certain programs because of her health insurance. Donna says most places didn't call her back, and those that did had either a four to six month wait list or a price tag of over $30,000 for just 28 days. She was losing hope until she got one phone call. Friday, I took a loan out of the bank, got a passport for my mother. We drove her down and we, in, we got her in on um, Saturday morning. Enter Andy's house, a small, private, non-clinical residential treatment center in Montreal. It's run by director Mike Weston. It's how he pays it forward in his own recovery. 29 years old, I had three kids, a small business, uh, you know, a failing marriage, and just scratching my head wondering, you know, what I was going to do. I had, a, you know, a, an alcohol problem uh, and used drugs. So how exactly does the program at Andy's house work? First rule? No drugs. That means no Suboxone and no methadone. It's one of the things that prevent people from actually getting clean is you know, just the thought about you know, uh, withdrawal and the pain. But after three days, it's gone. Second, every resident is given a personalized recovery plan using a variety of proven approaches. That includes a 12-step program, art therapy, behavioral therapy, and physical fitness. But what the director of Andy's house says makes them stand out is that they go great lengths to make sure their residents feel like a part of a family. A lot of people say it. I've heard our competitors say it. You know, like, Mike, how do you do it? I keep hearing about Andy's. Like, it's like a family. It's like community. You know, hats off to you guys. You know, and that's like a real testament to what we're doing right here, I think. That's because the house was built on family. It's named after Andy. He's my brother. Yeah. So I lost him 19 years ago. How? Well, <laughs> okay. he was a great guy, loving, outgoing, selfless. I was six months sober, um, and he killed himself. So, thank God I was sober. The family environment isn't the only thing that makes Andy's house stand out. 90 days of living in the house, two years of outpatient treatment, and you get to come back for the rest of your life. At Andy's house, the total cost, only 19,500 American dollars. Jordan's family had seen price tags as high as $50,000 for just 28 days of treatment. So how is it possible for Andy's house to charge less and offer more? This is not something that, you know, we're going to get rich doing. Uh, that's not what we're here for. You know, we're here to continue the service. That price tag and the Andy's house family is what made it possible for Jordan to get sober. My two main counselors, I think of them as, you know, a father and a mother figure. Like, they saved my life. It isn't just about the family in the house, but the families outside of the house as well. When I go to visit with her, we do counseling with her counselor, with us as a family, not just her. Recovery is a daily battle for Jordan. I have to remind myself how far that I've come, and I have to think about you know, where I came from with the drugs, you know, and I have to think about where it brought me mm -hmm. and would it be really worth it to do that right now. Jordan knows she's lucky to be surrounded by support, but hopes that care will become more affordable for those who may not have the same resources. You know, we're not living in, you know, high-end places here, so, I mean, I, I would hope that 
you know, the government or whoever is in charge of that stuff would, would help people get the help they need because, you know, people are dropping like flies. When I first met Jordan, it was her first day out of her inpatient rehab at Andy's house, and she was back in Maine for just one day. She was hesitant about sharing her story, understandably, because it's very personal, but she and her mother ended up deciding to do it because they thought maybe if they shared their story, it could help, you know, one person out there struggling. And as we know with recovery, there's no proven solution at this point. There are resources, though, in Maine to help people going through what Jordan has gone through, provided they have space at any given time, right? Of course, there are resources available. And we actually compiled a list of some different treatment options that are available in Maine on our websites and mobile apps. There are also some videos, uh, parts of Jordan's journey that you didn't get to see here on TV. All right, thanks, Christina. Excellent. Thanks.